Yeah. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So. Yeah. How are you doing? Start. Yeah. I think entire day I've been watching tennis from the morning, and I already saw a semi-final between um, Simona Halep. And uh, Garbin Muzuroga from Spain. Halep is from Romania. She has been number one, and she lost. She was supposed to win in this tournament. She is number four, but uh, Muzuroga is unseeded. So anybody who doesn't know much tennis, unseeded means that means you're not in the top 32. That means you're uh, away from 32. She has not been playing well for the last couple of years, and she almost lost in round one. She lost the first set 6-1, and she was almost out, but she won that, and then she has been really strong, and now she's in the final. Uh, but we want to talk about um, how much do you play tennis yourself, right? Uh, yeah, I did play for a for an year. Um, I think more than a year. And um, I just, I mean, I've not taken any training or not, uh, uh, you know, not play very competitively. I just play with my friend, which is again Wang. Okay. And uh, we used to play on um, locally. There is a clay court, uh, so we used to play there. And uh, I was able to serve at least without many errors, and used to we used to have some rallies. So it was it was it was decent to start with. So, yeah, yeah I and mean, I also used to follow tennis a lot uh, before I think dropping off uh, a few years back. Uh, but yeah, I I know some of the players. Obviously, Federer. Everyone knows Federer. Oh, in February, everybody knows Federer. They probably had bad dreams about Federer. Now, uh, I think the in fact tennis was the first sport I ever ever watched. I think I was probably nine years old. It was probably 1990, 1991, and I started. So that's the first sport I actually really started watching. I think I was already playing cricket, but uh, when I started watching, this was the generally a sport I would sit down and generally watch. Otherwise, for cricket, it would be probably just watching a six or something. Somebody's really hitting, they not understand. But I started understanding. So my association with tennis goes for like three decades so this is 2020 and so um it's and I, I only played in my early 20s i think i played for two years possibly because when i was in college and then it just dropped off i can't find courts in india unless you have some kind of membership and other things but i when i was in uh, college in melbourne my friend uh, particularly this same guy ali he was my pakistani friend um he was into a lot of sports, so with him I used to play on the courts. It was like really cheap because we used to be, we were in the university, so for us it was like almost um, zero cost. But uh, apart from that, those two years uh, sporadically. But I really liked it. I did not think it was as challenging that it turned out to be. It takes a lot of strength. It is, yeah, uh, it is a lot of strength because I had a lot of stamina and I was I was a sports person, so I thought, okay, how difficult can it be? But uh, you know, especially even, if you're playing against a good player, if you're playing against something who, who has a similar skill like you, then it then it like it's like you know <laughs> no challenge. But yeah. if if it, if the other player is uh, even a bit decent, uh, then it becomes uh, difficult. It is difficult. Yeah, at the beginning I had no skill, so Ali used to play well, and he pretty much I think we played must have played fifty times, and he he beat me fifty times. So I think I was only happy that sometime I would take him to the third set. We would play three sets, not five sets. That was too much. So sometime I would take him to third set. I would be very happy. Mm-hmm. That's the best. I never won any match against him. I think I must have played some morons. I must have beaten them. But yeah, apart from but those were like really morons. But with him I never won, and he was not a great player, but. Fairly good enough to beat me every single time, but it used to be uh, when I used to. It, I think uh, I used to get tired by second set end, but sometime when I go to third set, that's the first time I realized what adrenaline really is. I mean, I knew that you you know you're broken by the end. Second set is finishing, and then you go to third set, and you're like, how will you survive because you already broke? But you survive. That's the weirdest part yeah. that you end up surviving. Yeah, it's, it's any. It's like uh, uh, how you get into an accident, and that time you don't feel much but the real pain comes after oh yeah yeah after that and it's not like you know, you're just you are gone so your uh, standard starts falling down in third set. it doesn't happen you just keep playing there's something you just like you know because people say maybe you're just lowering your standard you can still play but no we used to play with the same intensity it's just after we are done once it when we shake hands like we used to always shake hands uh, just like professional players and that's time we would like okay 
dude, we are so done. Like, we're so done. It's just crazy. We just played for like, what, two and a half hours. And there was like, you know, we don't get those luxury also of the players. Obviously, they have much more intensity, but we don't get to sit around people getting the ball for us. We have to get our own balls, right? Nobody's giving us water, towels. We have to do everything ourselves, okay? It's not like somebody else is doing anything for us. Okay, and um, so it was, and we didn't, we hardly ever sat down also. We didn't like sitting down too much. We would only take a little break if we feel like too tired. But we would just keep playing. We was just like, yeah, it's, I don't know. Sometimes you'd feel like you take a break. It kind of t- drops the intensity. Know, did you take those breaks as yeah. these people take? Like constantly keep sitting down and uh, those games? No, no, no. I think uh, we used to play around uh, two hours. Uh, and within those two hours, we just used to take a single break for like five minutes. Uh, because, uh, because we used to play under... Uh, uh, play around like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock under the sun. So, hmm. it used to get hot. Uh, so, otherwise, no, no breaks. Because, yeah, same thing. If, if, I, if you sit for too long, then uh, uh, that intensity starts falling. Yeah, exactly. We didn't even have chairs. So, I mean, I, I guess these guys play at another level altogether. So, they need to sit. But uh, we didn't even have chairs. So, if you just take a break, we just walk around. We just like, you know, every couple of games, you know, you just walk around. You take your 15 second walking around and chill. Uh, but yeah, yeah not, not an official yeah. break. You just kind of sit down on the floor or something. No, we didn't do that. Um, then coming back, um, who right now, because obviously we know Roger Federer is going to lose. He, it's happening as we speak. I'll just double check the... I think we should really put this out straight away. Uh, Jokovic has already won two sets, as we know. Roger Federer came out firing because he knew he was injured. He started hitting all these winners, like, you know, high stakes game, um, low percentage game. And it was working for him, but somehow just dropped off towards the end of the set, lost the ma- lost the set. And now it seems very improbable that Jokovic is going to let this go. So, Jokovic is going to be in another final just for the audience. Um Nadal lost in the quarterfinals to Peter, uh, not Peter Thiel, Dominic Thiem. <laughs> I keep saying Peter Thiel. So Dominic Thiem and this uh, Rafael Nadal has won 19 Grand Slam. Of them are 11, yeah, 11 French Open. Yeah. So he's the second highest and Federer has 20. So this was his chance to actually tie with him. That's why if you really see the match highlights of it, um, he is really, really angry. He gets upset. I mean, you would think he's like, I don't know. He doesn't, he feels like more Nick Krigios in that than actually himself or probably like uh, John McEnroe than himself or Goran, <laughs> Goran, Goran, Goran Ivanisevic. In our time, we watched Goran Ivanisevic, right? Getting upset, yeah. breaking the rackets. Yeah. So, yeah, he wasn't probably breaking the rackets, but he was getting very, very, very like fired up. Yeah. It was, I saw the highlights. I didn't see the match. Oh, you saw the highlights. So, yeah. Just, you know what I'm it saying. It was a very, yeah, it was a very close match, right? And, uh, I think three sets uh, went to tie. Tiebreakers. Yeah. And these top players hate losing a tiebreaker because they feel that's more. Um, it's 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 a it's a real sign of who is actually a better player because you know there's no there's no nonsense. It's like it's saying everybody's getting one serve each, and the tiebreaker they feel that that really proves who is the best better player, right? Because right now Roger Federer was hitting good shots, but when he saw the tiebreaker in this one, he lost seven one. So he really got you know kind of exposed there. That he's probably not his best best at, at all. Obviously, he's injured. But anyway, the point is that now uh, Nadal lost his opportunity to win his 20th Grand Slam and tie with Roger Federer. Uh, and Federer lost the opportunity to become the oldest uh, person to win a Grand Slam. Grand Slam fi- final? Last year's a Grand Slam final. Yeah, okay. So, because I think he has uh, last year's won a Grand Slam was in Australian Open itself uh, two years back. Two years back, so yeah. 18. After that, yeah, after that, he has not won a Grand Slam. And I think I'm not remembering the name, but there is an Australian uh, uh, player who, I think in the 70s, uh, mm-hmm. he was the oldest to win a Grand Slam at 36, I think. So, uh, Roger Federer is actually chasing that for the last two years. And now he's uh, 38 now. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot of things common with these legends, uh, interestingly. Uh, Djokovic is Gemini. I mean, we are Gemini, so he's Gemini. Uh, uh, Nadal was born on the same day I was born on, different year. And with talent. <laughs> I was born without any talent. He was born in 85, June 3rd. And Roger Federer is 38 and I'm 38. So, there's a lot of similarities between these morons and, uh, and me. Uh, sorry, I'm the moron. They're they are the geniuses. So, yeah. it's I And I've been mean, like, you know, the funniest thing is like... Forever, like you, you said you dropped off watching it. But Roger Federer came into prime in 2003. Um, I think Nadal came into prime in 2006, I believe, when he won the French Open. It could be five off my head. Um, and Jokovic has been on in for the last 12 odd years, right? 
These guys have been yeah. there forever. These guys are like the Ronaldo and Messi's and they just simply refuse to leave. And everybody else is so younger, but they're just not able to match yeah, them at all. Uh, I think, I think uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, uh, I think tennis viewership has really gone down uh, in recent years. I was reading somewhere that tennis, uh, barring the Glen, uh, the Grand Slam, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the other uh, events are not so popular anymore. Even the viewership of the Grand Slams are going down. I think because uh, it's always those uh, three people uh, and there are, there are couples uh, who come in. But other than those five people, no one has really been able to break into the top, right? So I think that is something. I think this same thing happened with Formula 1. <laughs> Michael Schumacher was winning everything. Yeah, true. So, but they at least have few names which everybody recognizes, right? Like Vettel, yeah, yeah. even McClurg, who's just come in recently. And then obviously oh, the the English yeah. English player. What is that guy's name? Um, the champion who just won six time now. The the British oh, English player. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, the name think, is sleeping, right? Obviously, but then uh, uh, Fernando Alonso is coming back next year. It looks like uh, who was a great champion, and then uh, uh, then that will be another interesting thing that uh, what's going to happen. So, but they still have names. But I think the problem is that over the last few years they haven't had a new superstar. So that's been a huge yeah. problem. Anyway, I think coming back to um, uh, Zverev, I think that's the guy I was talking about. He's 22. He's German. He has been touted as the next Roger Federer or the next big thing. But that's been three years and people are like waiting for him to do something. He was the second youngest to crack into the top 20, top 10, sorry, in ATP. And he has been there and thereabouts. He wins a lot of tournaments outside Grand Slam. But in Grand Slam, the highest he's ever gone is quarterfinals in French, um, 18 and 19. But this is the highest he's ever gotten now to a semifinal. Now, if he ends up beating... Dominic Thiem, which is going to be bloody difficult because Dominic Thiem has lost both the finals in French, 18 and 19. But um, it will be very difficult to beat Thiem, but he has the ability. So if he, in case he does beat uh, Dominic Thiem, he will be up against the literally the greatest player right now, Novak Djokovic. And that's going to be some mighty thing. But if he goes out there, goes to the final and beats uh, this guy, I think it can be a beginning of a new superstar. Something that is... Need of the hour, need of the years, then it's been we need somebody because he needs to beat this guy and actually get up there because it's been yeah. absolutely tragic. And the, they've been really looking at this guy that this guy, and plus he is German, people are like matching with him, Boris Becker, and other things of the uh, yesteryears. If he does beat, it can stop because also you realize that sometimes it takes people a lot of time to crack through, and then once they win one big grand slam, then they get this confidence that they can do this. Mm-hmm. It happened with even Roger Federer, people don't realize this, but Roger Federer. For the first couple of years, um, it, he took a lot of time. By the way, he was 23 when he won. Um, no, it was uh, incorrect. He was, I think, 21, 22. But he was also touted from 18. He was number one in the juniors. Then mm. people people started calling him. I, I'll tell you in this thing because I used to follow him. People used to call him lazy. People were like, look at him. He doesn't give a shit. And only when he won in 2003, the uh, Wimbledon, then people realized he's not lazy. That's the way he moves. <laughs> That's yeah, that's the way yeah, he moves. Now, he like always moves like that. Suddenly, yeah, that's why he's played till 38 at such highest level because he has not expended as much energy as anybody else would have. Can you see, Rod, uh, not Yoko, Yoko is still good, but see uh, Rafael Nadal. I mean, the guy Nadal, expends yeah. so much energy. He's like, he, and he, did you see his muscles? Have you, when you see uh, Roger Federer's, his arms are just like mine. And when you yeah. see Nadal's, he's like, like he's like going for some like WWE or something. <laughs> this guy is like super pumped up. And we see he has some concerns with his underpants, who keeps taking in in his ass. He keeps removing them all the time. He's just got serious concerns with that. But otherwise, um, I mean, it would have been great for him to be there. But again, let's just get somebody else in. But at least we know one either Dominic Thiem or Alexander Zverev is going to be there. So at least we know one new person will be there in the final. Uh, team not particularly in the final because he's already lost two French Open finals and he would not want to lose the third one but I'm really hoping Alexander Zverev actually gets into the final and hopefully beat Jokovic we are only assuming that Jokovic will uh, end up beating Federer but I think by the time this uh, podcast finishes Jokovic would have already won he's already at 4-2 in the third set now just check so I was also thinking next time we can also do a live one we can also take a breaks in between you know just to we can edit it later on but you know how the people do live matches. 
so it's very can be very interesting mm. like how this is going yeah. through so yeah um, i don't know what's your opinion and now uh, who do you think is going to actually win i mean i know all the votes are on Yo- novak jokovic uh, to win the slam this will be 17th by the way he has won 16 grand slams and 7th australian yeah. open yeah i mean if nadal is not there i don't see um, how he won't win jokovic because uh, yeah i mean he's on a roll right now right uh, yeah but he's also been surprised in the final over the last uh, year or so when he was completely on roll he won one and he then just suddenly loses to a player because these people um uh, as i said uh, alexander zverev he is something he's 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 very very impressive it's just that he kind of either he gets nerves or whatever is happening so he doesn't seem to perform at the big stage but now that he's already in semi final if he's in the final maybe he just you know i don't know, just yeah, just cool down yeah. he is, has the ability he's 22 he has the ability to beat him it's not like he just come out randomly yeah. people have that's been hailing true, him for a long time now and i think i think uh, uh, it will also depend upon this match which is currently going on if if this stretches a lot uh, then it may which one? take some uh, semi final which is going on right now oh that's not going to stretch he's definitely going to win it straight away yeah. so, so that's it, it, dip, it depends on the just, other one actually yeah. other one also like you know he's 52 now he's just going to win okay so yeah. he's just going to win so he, and also you have to understand that he has an extra day now because this match is already over they're playing tomorrow so he gets an extra day in hand and with the heat mm-hmm. with the melbourne heat and tomorrow his team and uh, zverev have like a four five setter grilling match advantage is already jokovic he he is, he's he's well rested yeah the odds are odds are uh, uh, in favor of jokovic because uh, and i think tomorrow is going to be a hot day because i'm watching this match and they said that it's going I think it's going to be forty. Forty, yes, so, it's going to be forty degrees. Yeah, they've already declared that. So it's not going to be good for so these people. Good. They're getting already their yeah. ice packs. So okay, if you're putting all your money on Jokovic, then I would say I would put my money on Alexander Zverev, which is a massively high bet because he's not even in the final. So and for yeah. the best part will be I put my money on Zverev, you put on Jokovic, and then team wins, and then people will be like <laughs> these podcasters, these guys are like fucking shit. These guys don't know their <laughs> shit. They're like the worst podcasters ever. Yeah, I mean, how many people watch this or uh, listen to this? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the funny, funny thing is, like, is Zverev is German and uh, theme is uh, Austri- Austrian, just like Hitler. He just comes into <laughs> Germany. Nobody's even suspecting and wins everything. Well, all in the wrong way, but yeah, he can he can do a Hitler, which is a very crappy analogy and very shady analogy that people would not want. but uh, i just noticed that he's austrian and this guy is german because obviously both speak german um, and so when while they're playing they probably will be abusing each other in german or probably being nice to each other in german <laughs> who know um, yeah, it's a good match uh, i think they'll give give uh, everything true and, uh, also if you've seen both the guys like both guys are good looking as very particularly is like very good looking so from a women's point of view they just watch they just watch it you know who's good looking and uh, if this guy wins the tournament this is going to be like a huge um, shot in the arm for tennis itself which i think you you're the one who told me that tennis viewership has been going down which i noticed it but i not done the study on this but you told me formally that it has definitely gone down over the it years it has definitely gone down and uh, yeah no indians as well <laughs> oh, well 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 indians were never there what are you talking about you talk about vijay amrita in what 1974 or something <laughs> doubles and mixed doubles not not yeah. singles now even in, in doubles we used to have a lot of like you know leander pace yeah, and bhupati right. bhupati yeah. ruled the rules for a while for a long time in fact almost like i think yeah. at least over a decade from to 1999 when they won like you know back to back finals and then they lost twice in the final they were in all finals and then for the next 10 years they kept doing it and even till 2014 15 yeah. also they were like playing mixed doubles and winning with other people even sanya mirza yeah. then sanya yeah. mirza did with hingis and she won few tournaments with martina hingis martina hingis yeah, yeah. i think navrat navrat uh, navratilova as well yeah so also with linda lee and the pace yeah, so, so i mean yeah um, and uh, is there any asian player uh, in men uh, who is yeah that's um, the japanese guy right yeah. and oh. i'll probably forget his name some japanese guy some japanese yeah i think so yeah, yeah. so i mean that's all uh, it's still very predominantly uh, european and uh, americans who are uh, ruling the troops right now so it's it's kind of yeah i think the viewership uh, i mean th- this is one of the reasons why the viewership is also going down it's like uh, 
the Asian representation has gone down. I I feel. Um, I'm not sure it was there very high. Actually, it used to be actually. By the way, although you're saying American, but you know, there's hardly any American. I mean, don't think about Serena Williams. American used to rule the roost, and they are the one who's actually not in their top ten at all. Like, we just they're yeah. just completely gone. And that's pretty one of the reasons why it just doesn't feel like anybody is going to be there. So, key Nishikori is the gun. He's not been playing very well recently, so he's dropped to 17th. I just checked. Um, but otherwise, Nishikori has been good. And uh, Lewis Hamilton, that we were not able to remember, I just he just he's popped started. up my mind. The great yeah. Formula One champion. So, from England. Uh, he shit on India once. Yeah, well, I, I, I never defend anybody who shit. Like, I never say anything against people who, dip, who shit all over India for the right reasons. He said, it's a poor country. It's a poor country, for heaven's sake. So, he said, what are you supposed to say? It's a rich country. No, it's not a rich country. GDP is out there for everybody to see. And the, and the race they were have, having was in JP. Uh, and it was, I think, uh, uh, way outside in Noida. Noida, yeah. I mean, where nobody can reach. Through those uh, shanties, yeah. and you would be thinking, but yeah, I mean, Brazil is a uh, uh, you know poor country, but no one talks about them. Well, not relatively as poor, but yeah, let's not move on to Brazil and what that yeah. is all about. But there's a different situation altogether. So, okay, your money is on Yoko, which I believe. So, I should be fairly, you know, take a, you know, go out on a limb here and say Zoere will win. And I really hope he does. I think eventually you also want Zverev to win. So something good happens to tennis. We can bring new audience yeah, and yeah. it just revives the yeah. tennis, right? You can't have these same people winning every freaking tournament. Yeah. yeah. True, true. Let's go to ladies which nobody knows about. Today already one finalist yeah. has been decided. And, um, in fact, I, yeah, sorry. I mean, in fact, when I was uh, uh, following, as I said that I was not following tennis much and obviously not following women's tennis much. So, the last thing I remember from women tennis is um, uh, when the uh, Japanese girl who is not Japanese. Osaka. She's an American. Yeah, Osaka won and the people were booing her. Uh, so, that is the last thing I remember from women tennis. There was in 2018 I, French I, Open, so it's more, more than a year. Uh, and she won yeah. Australian Open straight after. But now, I think she lost. I don't know which round she lost, but she's definitely out. She, I think she lost pretty early. Pretty early, right? And, uh, she hasn't been playing very well. She's... She's had yeah, problems. The world number one is Ashley Barty. Ashley Barty is world number one. That's Australian. But she's only won one Grand Slam. You know, one of the problems why nobody's caring about women's tennis is because whenever there's number one, either they've not won any Grand Slam. Before, it used to be like, yeah. who's number one? Steffi Graf, Martin, and Navratilova. These people have won like tens of Grand Slams. Caroline Wozniacki, who started like, she was world number one for years and she had not won any Grand Slam. It's only in 2018 she won a Grand Slam. Now she's retiring this year. Yeah. I, I think even the... Uh... The other person, uh, uh, other lady who is in the uh, finals, uh, she was a former world number one. Uh, You're talking about Garbin uh, Muzuruga. Muzuruga, yeah. yeah. She was former so, world number one, and right now yeah. she is not even yeah, not even seated. Yeah, she is not seated. Yeah, in the I think uh, ATP she is 32, uh, but in Australian Open she is not seated. So uh, yeah, I mean uh, that I think you are correct that uh, this. Uh, since no one is winning like uh, continuously, Constantly, yeah. uh, so people are not uh, really aware of their names. and uh, There's no aura, right? Somebody used to create an aura that, you know, I'm going to come in and I'm going to be just awesome. I think that's not particularly a bad thing. It's just that sometimes people need some kind of consistency at some level. Okay. It probably yeah. goes like too far and inconsistent. We don't want somebody to continuously dominate. But we also want somebody to at least, there's four or five players we say like, okay, these people are there. Because see... Just the same way whole Federal thing and uh, no, uh, Jokovic thing and Nadal thing is hurting tennis. But because mm-hmm. they've been there too long. But what women's tennis need is at least those rivalry to be there to start with. And then yeah. stay for five years yeah. and then new people come in. Okay. There's no rivalry going. Away. I mean, can you think of Serena Williams my age and she's just stretching out almost 40 years old and she's just going on and on. And um, yeah. we still expect her to win. I mean, this was the first time she ever lost in a third round. Uh, in a Grand Slam in Australian Open in 15 years. She always gets to the semi-final finals. It's just a common. She's won 23 Grand Slam for heaven's sake. So, mm-hmm. it's been crazy. And now, these two people have... Simona Halep has won two Grand Slams. So, she's the one of the most known players if anybody follows tennis. Uh, the mm-hmm. Romanian girl. And um, I don't know if you watched the highlights. I watched both the... No, I watched the direct match between Simona Halep and uh, Muzuroga. And I watched the highlights for Ashley Barty who's, who's world number one against Sofia... Mm-hmm. 
Kenan, the uh, American girl who is uh, just 21 years old and up and coming and completely surprised people. Have you watched both of them or what's the st- status? Or Otherwise, I, I'll talk about yeah, it. I, I, yeah, I watched the highlights. So, yeah, both both the matches. Did you notice one thing? Because, see, uh, because Halep and Barty were like much superior players they, at this stage speaking. So, they were what they, what they felt was that if they hold their guns, they play the way they're supposed to play, don't make as many unforced errors, they will definitely be able to beat them. Okay. But... What happened was when they were just playing their game without trying to like increase the intensity to another level to kill the to kill the match to like you know overtake, they realized that that was not good enough because these people were like you know underdogs. They were like, okay, we're gonna lose like this, so we're gonna up the ante. Both the games we noticed that both time Barty and Halep were actually ahead in the sets, and towards the end when push came to shove, these people said like uh, Mozuroga. And Kenan also, Sophia Kenan, they say like, okay, either we increase the intensity or at this level, they will beat us. So they increase yeah. the intensity and then they beat them. Like by playing better, but not not because Barty or uh, Halep were playing worse, but they played better. I mean, the intensity completely rose to another level. And yeah. when the crunch points came in, either the big players made a mistake or these people came when came up with a massive yeah, winner. winner. There were a lot of uh, unforced errors as well uh, uh, in the... Uh, in both the matches, uh, so uh, at least in the highlights. Yeah, if you but if you notice it, it's just very obvious that uh, in Muzuroka match, Halep has made half unforced error than uh, Muzuroka. But Muzuroka has probably done double the winners when compared to Halep. So Halep was, Halep was playing control game. She said, "If I play my control game, Muzuroka will not be able to beat me." But she beat her by just being more aggressive. I think same way even in both the sets, if you notice, Barty was winning, and towards the end, she just takes over and wins. Because she just goes after it and uh, hits a winner, and sometimes Barty will make a mistake. She also makes an unforced error. So you yeah. you induce those right by you by changing the whole intensity of the game. Because if these because these players have been in the finals already, they've been world number one, so they know their deal. So they say we are controlling the game. It's when you challenge them, it's like no, we'll not let you control it. And that's the time you know they get like okay, what are we doing? And then you just throw them off the perch, throw them off their comfort couch and suddenly they're like okay make them think and then you just hit this amazing couple of shots and suddenly and particularly on the big points tennis is about big points right so if you're up you can have six um, break points you don't win any but other person can get one break point and they win it complete change in shape also at 5-4 it just you win a set right today just now you, you're watching Federer she, he was up like 5 almost could have done 5-1 in the first set but he didn't do it. Became five all, then became six all, and then he just completely destroyed. I think I'm gonna double check. I think he's lost already. Yeah, he's lost. So it's uh, oh, seven oh. six six four six three. Novak Djokovic. Congratulations in the finals. Your man is already there. Yeah, I think uh, after the first set, he uh, Federer was injured. He went out for uh, for, for ten minutes, I guess. Um, yeah, I I, can, I can't blame that, but I think he just he just stopped uh, getting those winners, which he was getting towards the first part of. See, the moment he came in, we knew he was aggressive because he doesn't have enough energy. So he was making sure that yeah. he he he's, he doesn't have rallies and he goes after the he goes for winners. And even if you see the stats yeah. for the first uh, uh, set, you will notice that he's done he's hit more than twice the winners than this guy. Okay, it just uh, it's just towards the end he kind of just dropped the ball and obviously I just I think he was getting more injured towards the end because his injury is not like he can't play. It's just something which is bothering him. And now that he's come out against the best player in the world, it's going to be mighty difficult, right? So I always knew, even if you were, because I think before we were about to start the podcast at three, and that time he was about to win the first set, I was going to still tell you that he's not going to win because there's no way he can sustain it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. eventually ended up losing the first set also. And now 7 6, 6 4, 6 3 is out. Um, but, anyways, we say like he was 38 and with yeah. the injury, and he's, he's doing bloody well. He should have lost the quarterfinal also. That was a miracle that he actually won the oh, quarterfinal. Yeah. Sandgreen, I think he yeah, uh, saved like seven match seven points. Seven match points, yeah. Sandgreen, yeah. Sandgreen, yeah. Crazy, so crazy. he saved seven, uh, seven match points. I, I think that took, uh, again, that took a toll on him physically. It, it would, uh, right? You would, you would imagine it will take him. Yeah, so, it, when talking about now in the final, um, see, Muzuroga clearly has a lot more experience because she's already won twice and uh, she's had really bad 18 and 19. But right now, she's in the peak form. Um, Kenan showed Kenan is the you know it's the rookie rookie finalist um, so I would say that people will say I, w- I want to pick Mozuroga this time so definitely so I would rather yeah, force I, you to pick even I, even I pick 
，你刚那个有练柔骨，有练柔骨，有过一次。哈哈哈哈哈。那么，呀，呃。怎么练是背课的 ？I I， 哈哈 ，It can't be like you if you pick someone, I can't pick the same. Oh no, you, you, I'm for, I'm gonna force you to pick Canon, but I think you, I'll let you speak about why you think Muzroga is not good. Apart from different reasons、yeah, than I gave you. Yeah, I think、uh, because she is、uh, obviously she has won twice. Yeah, French and Wimbledon in sixteen and seventeen years. Yeah, so she already knows how to win, and plus she is coming back. I think I, I was seeing her graph, so、uh, she is being、uh, playing better and better as she has come back. So I would really、um, think because it, it's a very big stage, right?、Uh, this will be. I am not、right. sure whether this is. Kenin's first、uh, Grand Slam、oh, final. Oh, she it is, it is. As I was saying, she is yeah, only yeah. the highest she has ever been is fourth round, and she's only twenty、yeah, one.、Okay. Mosrova is twenty six, so she's already、mm-hmm. been there, done that, seen the highest level, dropped off, and now coming back. Yeah, and she, although she's experienced, she's not old as as maybe other players.、Hmm. So she's still pr- pretty, and so physicality also,、uh, physically also, she is very fit. I mean, yeah, I mean these so, days people are very strong. So twenty six is yeah, nothing. Yeah. When Serena Williams what thirty seven, thirty eight? I don't know how、yeah, old she is here. So yeah, and uh, uh, so yeah, I think、uh, yeah, my money would also be on Mugurutsa.、Uh, I, I don't know how to Muzuruka. Just,、uh, say it. I think it was Muzuruka.、Uh, Muguruza. You can just say Garbin. That's <laughs> the first name. Yeah. So yeah, my money is on her as well. Uh, but again, um. She can、uh, Sofia can surprise you. You know, you know, she must just pick up the intensity because what they were saying was, if you notice the other way around, so in this Sofia was actually making less unforced error, not going for aggressive game throughout. Only she was aggressive when you know she needed to. Otherwise, she was controlling her unforced error. So in in case in the final, Garbin just you know starts hitting more unforced error because when you go for winner, that's the time you end up going for unforced errors. So if the unforced error count increases. Uh, Sophia Cannon can actually still win. I I think there's I'm just picking、uh, Garbin because she is, has the experience, and I、mm. feel that she should be. But at the same time, you have to understand that、uh, Sophia would have more rest time because Sophia already was in the final before、uh, this、yeah. thing happened, right? So Barty it was a day before only. So she is my well rested.、Uh, she only played two sets, although、uh, Muruzuga also played two sets. But you、okay. know she's had extra time. Uh, no injury problem, so she is younger. So you know, as long as she comes out all five, I I hope it's a great game. I just I just don't want it to be once because sometimes it happens that a new player comes in, they just lose the nerve, and then it becomes like six one six null. It happens in women's finals a lot, particularly with the younger、yeah. player. He just completely drops the ball. Yeah, I mean they, they would、uh, play through the tournament, and then when it comes to the final, they just uh, uh, you know. It's a big deal, right? Because because I think about like I would get jitters. Like I can untold. I always tell people don't get jitters. But I would tell you that I would probably get a lot of jitters if I'm suddenly in the final, and Rod Laver Arena, everybody is watching. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then somebody's already been there in the finals.、Uh, by the way, Muzrok has never lost a final, so that's also interesting.、Oh. Yeah, she has not. She's only been two finals, and this is the third final. So she、that's、feels like.、Version. <laughs> yeah, she is gonna be like really pumped up, and this girl has never been beyond fourth round, and suddenly she's getting it. She's in the finals. It's crazy. She's like a dream come true already. So let's see. I I don't know her. I have not followed her properly, so I will not know much about her、um, the the character or the you know the nerves, how she holds the nerves. And only reason she's not been in the final because she's very young and she's just up and coming, not because she's had jitters. So I don't know like how stoic she is. And if she can hold her nerves, but I really hope it's not one of those six one six one nonsense. That's all. Yeah, even I hope so. And for women, there is come on. People pay so much money for the final, and they go there six one six one matches over in like fifty seven minutes. That's ridiculous. And the men's final goes for like four hours, and the people they pay them the same money. Okay, I'm not gonna get into that debate right now. Yeah, is a that's that's also hurts tennis, right? You come in, you pay like I think people pay like minimum one hundred fifty for the worst seats, and the tickets go for like thousands of dollars, and then a match finishes in fifty seven minutes, and you're like, what the hell just happened? You know, unlike football. Football is like you will be there for two hours, okay? No matter what happens. Here you don't know. You could be there for five hours. So I think that's what people come in for. And、uh, but when it happens like six one six one fifty four minutes match over, it just becomes like what the hell just happened? Okay,、yeah. there's no good.、Um, although it's not as worse as the、uh, the UFC, 
it's the last match a uh, few days ago this guy who is the irish guy who is the world champion like he used to be a champion and the m- most known guy uh, ever what's this guy uh, like mcgregor mcgregor yes thank you i didn't have to google that I keep forgetting things so uh, uh, Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor, he came out and he beat this guy in 46, 42 yeah, seconds. Yeah. 42 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so so right, yeah. that was like his name is Cowboy. I think that's his nickname. So and he beat him like just like it was over and people like waiting for this thing and that thing unlike tennis they're waiting for this for a year like more than yeah, three yeah, years yeah, and they like come in and they're like okay it's done. Yeah, there's so, uh, such a huge build up. I actually I was in Las Vegas when uh, some similar UFC match was going to take place. And they had so many advertisements and so much uh, hype was uh, uh, going around. And just imagine, you don't even like get the time to sit. <laughs> and watch and yeah, and these people get millions. Movies. There are other fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there are other fights. Uh, but this is the showpiece event. Uh, so yeah, it's <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff happens, man. So yeah. Anyway, so I think we both our money is on Garbin Muzuruga, but let's just say like. Let's just hope it's a very great match. And if Sofia wins, I'll be very happy uh, for her because Garbin has already won. So maybe we can have a new champion coming in. That's also good for tennis. And I hope Alexander Zverev wins first the semi final. And if Team wins the semi final, then I hope Team wins the final. Okay. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there because, like, otherwise, you know, both of us will look like an idiot. So I'm like, yeah, I'm hedging my bets everywhere. <laughs> even even uh, Dominic Team as well. And. Um, Barty is already world number one. She's she's still 23, so she has a lot of years. Even Simona Halep, she is. Um, I've forgotten how old she is. I think Simona Halep is 28. So, but you know, these days people are like super super fit, and uh, she's Romanian and everything. She they're solid, so they can still win for like a lot of years. I hope uh, people come in to watch female tennis, not just seeing like you know good looking people or Serena Williams, uh, a legend <laughs> like which she's been a legend for like what 20 years now. It's crazy. Okay, so what's the final word? I think next one we'll be doing for... Um, I, we were supposed to talk a little bit about the cricket, but again, because New Zealand lost the third match, so it's 3-0, so the, I don't think there was much to talk about. Um, we will be doing next one on the Oscars. So if anybody's watching this, Oscars are on uh, February 10th. So yeah. which will be very early, I think. I still, yeah, night yeah, I still or have night, to yeah. watch uh, um, Parasite, which Para, is... Uh, Para, yeah. Parasite. Yeah, I, we were just talking about Parasite the other day. I was in a in an interview. So, I think I'm interested in that. I don't know how to watch it. I think you'll probably tell me. We've already watched Marriage Story, which we both, you loved more. And I, I really liked it. Um, okay. For our own reasons, obviously. And then uh, Joker, obviously, we both liked. I don't think it's a great film. Yeah. It's definitely a very well-made film. But right now, it's I mean, about, it's uh, about think, hype. Yeah, we should talk about everything on that episode. I don't want to talk about much. Yeah, sure, sure, just, sure. I thought I'd just so, let people know that that's the next one that's coming up. We will yeah, probably launch it a few days before the Oscars and we'll make our predictions. Yeah, Best actor, yeah. director, movie. I think we movie. may yeah. do, a, do a short one uh, after the finals of Australian Open since we are so much into it now. So Yeah, sure. For, for tennis. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. Definitely we can do it. Yeah, I think we can do it. it might not be this long. Uh, maybe a shorter one. But um, we can definitely talk about it. Yeah, sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. All right, I think this is the right time to just uh, pull the curtains in. And um, hopefully, whoever is watching can, keeps watching us uh, further. So, as we said, Bikram, that we'll be doing uh, analysis, okay? After once it's all done and dusted in a couple of days, Sunday will be the final. Because it's Australia, not like US, so it will be done in the day only in India. Because Australia is already yeah. like ahead. Like I don't know, right now, if they're ahead five and a half hours or four and a half. Four and a half, four and a half is standard. And then the daylight saving becomes five and a half. So either way it is, they'll be will be done by the time we come in here. We should already have the results for the final. Mm-hmm. And uh, today is what Thursday, right? So yeah, yeah. Sa- Saturday will be women's final and Sunday will be men's final. So I hopefully let's see whosoever wins, I'll be happy for them. Either way, I hope yeah. Jokovic doesn't win all the time. But yeah, if he wins, then he'll be on 17, so which is also good. So who knows? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, um, it's a for us. Absolutely. Cool. So I think we'll okay. probably cut. Uh, have a nice day, everyone, and um, keep following us. And if you want to subscribe, if you have nothing else to do, you can do that as well. <laughs> and uh, do share this video if you like it. Yeah, with might as well, parents. particularly with your parents and your eleven-month-old uh, sister, or any toddler that you can find, <laughs> or maybe the Tinder one with them. <laughs> they should be up and running <laughs> very early. <laughs> Run for the future. All right. So, we'll cut it off. I think this is where we'll cut the video and then we'll take it from there.
and just cutting uh, okay. stopping the local video all right great and uh, i'm pa- i also pause the recording here